Welcome to Spider Technologies. My name is Jason, and today I would like to talk about some of the terminology you will hear when discussing telephony. Now, I know as a decision maker or a business owner, it can be extremely difficult and sometimes even frustrating to keep track of the many terms being thrown at you when looking for a solution. We are very sympathetic to this challenge and are here to help. The truth is we can provide many different kinds of solutions that work completely different, but the best solution for you will depend upon your specific application. Typically, what you can expect is that we will first listen to what it is you're looking for, and then we will ask you some questions, and then the answers that you give us will provide the direction that we need to configure the best solution for you. But for us to have this good conversation, we need to speak in terms that we both understand. Understanding their meaning is essential to understanding the various solutions being presented to you and how your choices directly affect your recurring expenses. Now, I am going to oversimplify some of the vocabulary, but it is my hope that at the end of this video, you will have a solid foundation and be more equipped to make a wise business decision as it relates to your communication needs. Specifically today, I would like to first discuss the telephone lines that serve your business to the outside world. These telephone lines are provided by a carrier, such as AT&T, that carry the signal to your business. And there are three different kinds of telephone lines. There are analog, digital, and IP. Analog lines, or POTS lines, are the oldest of the line types and is what has served most home phones and small businesses for over a century. You can go to any local retailer, such as Walmart, buy an analog telephone, plug it in, and expect it to just work. Each analog telephone line provides one simultaneous call. So if you want to support multiple calls, you need multiple analog lines. The only real feature that analog lines provide is caller ID, and that's it. Moving on with digital lines that were first introduced in the 1960s and is what has served most medium and large businesses. There are a couple terms you need to be aware of here with digital lines, and that is T1 and PRI. A full T1 supports 24 simultaneous calls over a single physical connection or digital line but again, does not really offer any features beyond caller ID. However, T1s also introduces and makes widespread the concept of a single trunk that has multiple channels, whereas a trunk is a single connection that supports multiple simultaneous calls. So therefore, a T1 is a digital trunk with 24 channels that supports 24 simultaneous calls with one call per channel. Now, switching gears, what a PRI does is take one of the T1 channels away, leaving you with a digital trunk that supports 23 simultaneous calls. And then the PRI uses that 24th channel to provide DID information. A DID is basically a telephone number, and until PRIs came around, every single analog line and T1 channel had their own DID or telephone number assigned to it. This means if you had four analog lines, you had four telephone numbers. If you had 24 channels on a T1, you had 24 telephone numbers. Again, oversimplifying. 
So going back to the DID information that a PRI provides, essentially tells you what number an inbound caller dialed to get you. Meaning, your telephone numbers are no longer attached to a particular telephone line in a one-to-one -one relationship. Now, with DID information, you can have one single telephone number pointed to 100 telephone lines. Or, if you wanted, you could now have 100 telephone numbers pointed to a single telephone line. And it is the DID information that makes this possible. Now, this brings us to modern day, starting in the early 2000s with voice over IP, where you take the capability of a digital line and move those calls from a dedicated physical connection, such as a T1 or a PRI, and now route your phone calls over an internet connection instead, along with your computer data as a pooled resource. Because this uses the internet protocol, we call this an IP telephone line. And the specific internet protocol we use for IP-based telephone calls is called SIP. Therefore, when you are talking about making and receiving phone calls over the internet through voice over IP, this is typically going to be done with an IP-based SIP trunk. A SIP trunk works exactly like a PRI does with all the same DID information, but connects over the internet instead of that separate digital connection. The different types of telephone lines have different strengths and weaknesses, and you can mix and match with multiple carriers. Your needs will generally dictate what is best for you. As an example, if you are a law firm or in healthcare, and your business relies heavily on fax servers and fax machines, then you are going to want to hold on to some of those analog or digital lines because those digital signals from the fax machines don't like going over the internet with the same success rates. You will generally need analog lines for elevators or if you're located in a distant location with limited connectivity. If you think back to the early 2000s, many of the complaints you heard with shoddy voice over IP was due to the internet connections that SIP trunks rely upon. Thankfully, today, the options available are magnitudes greater and more reliable. SIP trunks gives us a level of cost savings, redundancy, and management features never seen before. Speaking of redundancy, it's not uncommon to have multiple carriers, which is something only large companies ever had previously. This brings us to some of the confusion that different providers and carriers can create when they market their services. They tend to use terms that business owners will recognize, like selling a T1 or a virtual PRI, but they really don't have any resemblance to the traditional services. Instead, the message that is generally trying to be relayed is the idea of supporting multiple channels and providing DID information over a single connection. Now, you will note that not once in this entire video did I ever mention the concept of a telephone extension or even having a telephone system. So be sure to look for a follow-up video to tie everything together from end to end. I understand navigating these waters can be very disconcerting and can have some very expensive ramifications that continue on forever with your recurring expenses. But that is why we're here, to make sure you have the very best solution that fits your needs and in the most economical manner possible. So please contact us and let's have that conversation. We would love to help. Thank you. Please remember to like share, subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications of new videos. Thank you from all of us at Spider Technologies.